Hey guys, how's it going? Um, this is Clockwork here. I'm going to be doing a very, very, very simple um, reverse engineering tutorial for Java applets. So, uh, let's get started. Alright, basically um, what reverse engineering is, is it's taking a class file that has been compiled and it's basically um, decompiling it to where we like we reverse the process basically and we can see the source code of the original applet um, now uses for this are uh, pretty wide most people usually just do it so that they can see the um, the source code like maybe there was an applet that they wanted to see how it worked um, or something like that uh, and also um, if there's an applet that has some sort of uh, bypass in it, or uh, I mean, sorry, um, if there's an applet that has a password and they want to bypass the password, then um, then they'll do that. But um, for this tutorial, I'm just going to show you very simple. It it shouldn't be too long. Um, it's it takes about maybe a minute if you're doing it without talking and explaining everything. So, all right, let me go over what you're going to need. Um, you're going to need a folder in which to store crap in which to store your uh, Java D compiler. I have this folder here. Um, you want to go to this website or you can just Google search um, JAD, the Java D compiler that I'm using, um, which is the best one, I think. Um, a lot of people have suggested it, but yeah, you can go here. I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, yeah, so just select select the package for your operating system. I'm using Ubuntu, so I just used Linux. Um, it's pretty simple. It's just a zip file, not much to download. Um, and then you'll get this, um, which is an executable file. Um, and I'll show you how, how that works later on. Um, for Windows, I think that's an .exe file that you guys will get, um, but I'm not sure. And I'm almost positive that Mac users will get the same thing that um, that I'm getting here. But again, I don't know for sure. All right. So the next thing that we have to do is, um, yeah, I'm going to be using command line just to let you know. Uh, the next thing that we have to do is we have to find an applet that we're going to be um, we're going to be decompiling. So what I did was I just basically searched for um, some applets, like an applet example, just for this tutorial. And there's a 3D photo cube, and it's pretty cool. Um, it rotates when you move your mouse, and it doesn't use the J3D packaging, which is good because I hate that thing. Um, but yeah, you can click on the different ones, and it's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and see how this works. Um, whoops. And so to do that, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have to find where the source of this applet is coming from. Now, applets are always built into class files, um, in case you didn't know that. Just as every Java file is, there's always a class file. Um, yeah, any time that, you, that you're looking for an applet, you can just press Control F and then search for applet code and you'll find it instantly. Uh, in this case, it was very easy to find. Top of the page, very straightforward. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this class file and we're going to go ahead and put it up here. Um, now, sometimes in this, you will see something right here that um, it, it'll probably be after that or before it, I don't know. It just depends on the developer. It's usually after it though. That'll say code base and if it says code base you want to copy the directory um, that the code base is put that before this um, and then that should be where the class file is stored. Although sometimes when it's code base um, they'll either password protect or they'll just restrict all users besides their own IP address. Just a simple way to do that. 
but um, yeah, most applets, especially basic ones, are going to just be straightforward. Um, they're going to be in the same directory just because it's a little easier for storing and accessing. So yeah, just a little, a little bit of information there. All right, so once you have it in your URL bar, you're just going to press enter, and then you'll get the file. You save it. I've saved this like three times already. Yeah. You're going to want to save this, um, and then access it wherever you have this file. So, and I'm just going to move this over to where your uh, decompiler is. So once you have it where your decompiler is, you want to go to your command line. You want to go to the directory where your decompiler is and where, yeah, and where the class file should now be. And then you just want to basically, um, you're going to run the JAD command. It's pretty simple, very straightforward. Um, however, I th it should be different for Windows. I'm almost 99.9% .9 sure it'll be different. Um, for Windows, you're probably going to type this, and then the class file. But if you're using uh, any type of Unix um, operating system, well, any system that's based from a Unix, such as Mac and Linux, uh, but really any, um, I think, yeah, really any brand of Linux uh, will be Unix because that's yeah. Anyway, so. If you're running it on a Unix system, you want to do dot and then a forward slash, and or period forward slash for those that might. I don't even care. Anyway, <laughs> so it's period forward slash and then JAD. That basically means execute that file. So then you just do image 3D cube dot glass. Press enter and then voila. Now you have a JAD file. And then you just open that with a simple text editor, and then you have everything that you need. And that's, yeah, that's the source. Okay, scroll. I don't like, I don't like this um, Ubuntu 11 scroll bar right here. That's really annoying. But yeah, because you have to get like right there. Anyway, I'm rambling. Um, so yeah. Once you have this code, you're going to want to just copy it and then create a new file. It has to be the same name as the other class file. And then you're going to want to open this with your text editor, paste it, save it. Um, I go ahead and get rid of these two files, so just leaving the Java file. And then I just compile it. Um, I don't think you have to. I think you can probably just leave. Um, you can probably just leave the class file in there, and it'll just overwrite. But you know, might as well. So then, once you've done all this, um, and plus it makes it easier to just go up, and then it just, yeah. If you're doing it this way, you can compile it in any way that you want. Um, but then we're allowed to modify the text code. Yay. So, um, yeah, that's basically the simplest tutorial on this possible. Um, the next thing that you want to do, though, is get an applet like I have right here. Uh, the only thing about this applet um, in particular is that it uses parameters. So what you have to do is, in your applet, you have to copy and paste this. Um, you have to copy and paste all these parameters. And then you're going to want to change all these parameters. Well, not really just all of them, but these, um, these are fine. But you want to change the images, so that way you can use your own images. Um, or you can just rename images. And then... You can change these if you really want to, but you don't have to. Uh, and it should work universally. Um, so yeah, that's basically how that works. Uh, again, you know, 
this this has many uses, not just for viewing the source code. I know that was really kind of a lame tutorial, but hey, I mean it's very it's a very simple thing to do. Um, maybe later on I'll add a more advanced version or I'll show you some more unique things that you can do from this um, but until then this is pretty much as simple as it gets and that's reverse engineering a Java applet um, so later on I'll probably end up adding some PHP tutorials so if you want you can view those those will probably be more exciting maybe uh, and interactive than this one so yeah just you know subscribe comment below if you have anything that you want to say um and you know check out the site that's a big thing but yeah so just um stick around for some php tutorials and maybe some more uh reverse engineering maybe i mean there's not much to be you know to talk about but yeah so I'm Clockwork, and this has been a video tutorial on reverse engineering a Java applet.